Hi everyone and welcome to this tutorial bite for Oxygen Not Included which is about plastic and steel. These are two critical resources that really define the mid-game phase as they unlock the ability to deal with hotter temperatures especially industrial cooling. You'll want to focus on these once you've stabilised your base through the early game typically with food, water and oxygen and for further information on these topics the tutorial bites are linked in the card. Setting up Atmo suits is also recommended before this point if possible as it will make exploring and dealing with the heat much easier. I will have a tutorial bite on this topic as well. I'll start with plastic and this is used for building as well as for generating data banks in the spaced out DLC. It unlocks important buildings such as steam turbines and high pressure gas vents to advance your colony. There are two ways to make plastic and I'll cover each one in turn. Here you can see a very basic glossy Draco ranch which is simply a 24x4 room with a split atmosphere of hydrogen and carbon dioxide. Note you could use oxygen instead of the carbon dioxide, but using Atmo suits will make managing the gases much easier, as will having a liquid lock. The hydrogen is for the glossy Dracos to grow their coats in, and the oxygen or carbon dioxide is needed to grow the mealwood, and you'll need 8 mealwood plants. Make sure to set these to non-harvest using the harvest overlay found in the bottom right or on the Y hotkey. On the left is the grooming station to domesticate the Drecos, as well as the critter drop-off and the shearing station. You'll need a dupe with the critter ranching skill, and with that you can simply wrangle any wild Drecos and put them in here, assuming your map has some. By eating the mealwood, they will have an increased chance of laying glossy Dreco eggs, from which the glossy Drecos could then be sheared for plastic. The second way to make plastic is with petroleum, which comes from crude oil. On most base game or classic sized spaced out DLC maps, the oil biome is found at the bottom of the map and is fairly hot. However on some planetoid or cluster types, it may be located elsewhere or on another inner planetoid. You should be able to find a decent amount of naturally occurring oil pulled on the map, but you can also use an oil reservoir to get more which will also be covered in its own tutorial bite. With this crude oil, there are two ways to convert it to petroleum. The more advanced way is to use a petroleum boiler, which will again be in its own tutorial bite. For now, the easiest way to convert it is using the oil refinery building. Note that this loses half the mass, so you only get 5 kilograms of petroleum out for every 10 kilograms of oil in, whereas the boiler does not, but you'll likely want to do this in every game anyway to get started. There's a pump here I've placed to bring up the oil. Focusing in, here is the really simple setup and we've got an oil pipeline coming into the refinery, petroleum out into a reservoir and then into the polymer press. The reservoir building lets dupes work the refinery for useful periods of time so it's important to include. These buildings also produce heat and the oil refinery makes natural gas as a byproduct so I would strongly recommend keeping this away from your living areas and using Atmo suits to keep dupes safe. It's easy to set this up near the oil biome running a long power line down. Making the machines from gold amalgam will help avoid overheating issues, so it's recommended. To start with, you can just put this setup near your oil source and make a little plastic to get you started. You'll need 200 kilos of plastic to make a steam turbine, which is then needed for industrial cooling. Later on, you can make a more long-term setup as part of an industrial brick, which will be in its own tutorial bite. I'm showing an example setup of this here, which uses an enclosed room with a liquid lock and cooling loop. The steam produced by the polymer press will condense into water and can be pumped out from this small pit. The natural gas can be pumped out to be used as fuel in natural gas generators. It's highly advisable to use a hydro sensor and an atmo sensor to stop the pumps moving small packets, which is power inefficient. Moving on to steel, this is an important resource which can be used to build any building made from either metal ore or refined metal. It has the benefit of giving a huge plus 200 degrees to a machine's overheating temperature and steel is highly conductive and has a high melting temperature. This makes it a requirement for many more advanced builds and is an excellent material for making aquatuners from for cooling. Fortunately, making steel is fairly straightforward but does make quite a bit of heat. It needs the metal refinery building that draws 1.2 kilowatts of power and uses a liquid coolant which is heated up when making metals. I'll explain how to deal with the coolant shortly, but firstly, to touch on the ingredients, there are three that are required for making steel. The first is refined carbon, which is easily made in the kiln from coal. Kilns require no power, 
but do make a fair amount of heat when working, so you'll want to place them away from your living areas. However, you can make large amounts of refined carbon before this heat really becomes an issue, but you can put this in a cooled area later on if you wish. Secondly, you'll need lime, which is made in the rock crusher. There are three resources that can be turned into lime, these being eggshells, poker shell malts and fossil. You will likely have eggshells and poker shell malts that can be found around the map. Poker shells can be ranched, but this is difficult, so it's usually easier to leave them wild and simply collect their malts when they die. Fossil is a limited resource, but can be found in large quantities in oil biomes, and this is another reason why steel and plastic often go together. I typically set my rock crusher to forever for all of the lime recipes, as this is normally the ingredient that limits how much steel you can make. The rock crusher does make some heat, but similar to the kiln you can place it somewhere away from your living areas and it will generally not cause any issues for a long time. The last ingredient is iron, which can be collected from iron volcanoes or more easily made from iron ore that can be dug up. To make iron from iron ore you can use the rock crusher but you will lose half the mass. Given that the metal refinery is needed to make steel, we may as well use it to make the iron too, as this does not lose any mass. So moving straight on to that, the key consideration with the metal refinery is the coolant and the heat it produces. To cover the basics, you'll need to provide 1.2 kilowatts of power, so this is most easily done with heavy watt wire on the high power side of your power grid, but you could use a conductive wire too. Coolant needs to be piped in and is then piped out much hotter. The temperature change will depend on the metal you're making and the coolant you use. Making steel adds by far the most heat, increasing water temperatures by 56 degrees Celsius or oil temperatures by 138 degrees Celsius. By comparison, the next largest increase is in making iron, but this only adds 32 degrees to water or 76 degrees to oil. The first and easiest setup to start with is to find a reasonable pool of water and pump it into the refinery. For the refinery output, you can simply dump it into the same pool, but as a tip, put the pump and the vent at different sides of the pool. Remembering that making steel will add 56 degrees to the water, as long as the input temperature is below 45 degrees, then you won't have an issue. Above this, the water will be output from the refinery and turn straight into steam, breaking the pipes. Even better than this, if you have a pool of polluted water, then this can be 65 degrees as the polluted water evaporates at 120 degrees, not 100. Don't underestimate how much heat a pool, even of this size, can absorb. You can easily make tons of steel before you get close to getting too hot. In every game, you'll need to start with the basic setup to get enough steel to make a more permanent metal refinery setup. This is because the steel is used in the aqua tuner, so we can put it in a steam room without it overheating. I'm showing here my implementation of a sustainable metal refinery, which has a closed loop going through a steam room, and to get the temperatures required to boil water, oil or petroleum is used as a coolant. The trick here that I use in this loop is a bridge to stop it clogging up and a pipe thermo sensor linked to a liquid shutoff with an automation wire. This will loop the coolant around if it's hotter than 200 degrees, so it only exits once cool enough to add more heat to. With radiant pipes, the oil will pass the heat onto the steam, which is then consumed by the steam turbine and turned back into water, thus deleting the heat. When making steel, the turbine will actually make more power than the metal refinery consumes, which is a nice bonus. The last part of this design to mention is the cooling, and this is why we need an initial 1200 kilos of steel to make the aqua tuner. I will explain these in detail in its own tutorial bite, but I'll cover the system briefly here. The cooling is needed because the steam turbine generates quite a lot of heat, and will stop working at over 100 degrees Celsius. As we already have a steam room, we can simply add the steel aqua tuner to it. This is controlled by a thermo pipe sensor, which will turn on the aqua tuner when the liquid is too hot and I typically set this to a dupe safe value, say to turn on at above 30 degrees. Make sure you use water or polluted water as the coolant and loop it behind the steam turbine, watching out for the turbine output. You'll also need to include this bypass with a bridge to ensure that the flow continues when the aqua tuner is not on. A useful tip to filling the steam room is to use two different types of water, normally normal water and either polluted or salt water. Put in the polluted or salt water first with the bottle emptier and then add a layer of normal water which will fill the space. You'll typically need to delete and rebuild one tile at the end to remove the gas bubble. 
There's a fairly wide range of steam densities that you can use, and I would recommend anywhere between 10 to 100 kilos per tile. With this system set up, you can now use the refinery indefinitely, and will never have any heat issues. So that concludes this tutorial bite about plastic and steel in oxygen not included. I hope this lets you push through the mid-game with confidence, and thanks for watching.